Breaking news, baby! He's back. J.K. Dobbins is officially back with the Baltimore Ravens. Let's read it straight from Adam Schefter. He said, sources... Well, sources could be Marlon Humphrey. But anyway, he says sources. Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins, who has not yet practiced during training camp, is being activated today off the physically unable to perform list. So, it's official. Whatever it was, if it was him watching that preseason game and he was watching how Keaton Mitchell was running, he was like, oh, I don't know if my spot's so safe. J.K. Dobbins is back. If it was Gus Edwards looking like he wanted to truck somebody in that preseason game, even though I think he shouldn't have played. But, hey, he played and he came out good. And maybe Gus Edwards, some people in the comment section suggested, hey, maybe Gus Edwards, he just told the coaching staff he wanted to knock the rust off. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. That makes sense. Maybe that was it, but J.K. Dobbins is back. Maybe it was Melvin Gordon leapfrogging people. J.K. Dobbins got motivated by that and said, you know what, I need to try that. I'm coming back. If it was Justice Hill looking like it was about to be a loss of four and it ended up being a big game and him cutting back around, whatever it was, J.K. Dobbins is back. It's official. And you know what's funny? With this whole J.K. Dobbins thing, I actually forgot that he was on the physically unable to perform list. He was on the pup list. So he had to be activated and he had to pass the physical in order to practice. I, I forgot that it just wasn't a holdout. So Ravens, they took the initiative with this thing. Because when this whole dispute started, Ravens were like, look, J.K., they, they acted like they were the parent. And they're like, J.K., you're not about to embarrass me. You're not, you're not about to embarrass us. You're not going to be sitting here fully dressed in your uniform and all that while we're doing training camp. You ain't going to be just sitting off to the sideline. No, 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 no. We'll take care of that for you. You're going on the pup list. But now he's back. Now it's official. Now J.K. Dobbins will practice for the first time in a long time. And that's a beautiful thing. And now we can get back. I know a lot of Ravens fans are, are, are looking at this year like it's something special. And I really think it could be. If Ravens stay healthy. I really, I've really, i been saying it all offseason. I really do feel like they could go all the way. All the way if they stay healthy. Because the way that this team has been assembled. I know cornerbacks still. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But the way that the majority of this team has been assembled. Uh, they got some pieces. And even with cornerback, once Rocky Singh comes back, that'll be a, uh, that'll be a lot better. And then, of course, we're going to get the guys, uh, Kyle Hamilton and Marcus. Because, again, a lot of us looked at the preseason game and we like tripping out about cornerback when it came to that. But, again, th it wasn't the starters playing. So we got to keep that in mind. But regardless, they do, do still need some depth at the cornerback position. But anyway, the way that the majority of this team has been assembled, the way that this roster has been put together by Eric DaCosta, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think the last time that um we really like he really did a good job of assembling the roster was in 2021. 2021? That was the year that everybody got hurt, right? I think it was 2021. Or was it 2020? No, 2021. 2021. That was it. Um cuz that that was a that was a nice roster too. But then everybody started getting hurt and well, you know the rest of the story. Anyway, JK Dobbins being back, it gives the Ravens even more quality depth. They get their guy back. And essentially, J.K. Dobbins, a couple years ago, they were giving him the keys. They were giving him the keys. I know we talk about a lot how the Ravens do running back by committee, but a couple years ago, the year that he got hurt, unfortunately, um, that year was the year where it really looked like the Ravens were like, all right, J.K. Dobbins, it's you. It's you. I mean, they drafted him in the second round. That's pretty high uh, to just be a contributing running back. No. You don't draft a running back in that high to just be a contributor. You want him to be the guy. But when they were going to hand him the keys to be the guy, that's when that week three preseason game against the Washington Commanders, that's when that happened. And, I mean, oh, coincidence, the, the Ravens are going to be doing joint practices with the Commanders this week. So we'll see how that goes. And, hey, maybe this will be the week because the Ravens will be able to get to look at Chase Young up close and personal. But anyway, let's, we'll talk about that later. Um, but with J.K. Dobbins, that, that's when he was essentially going to be the guy. But all that got changed in one play. One play. And what made it even worse, it was behind the starting offensive line at that time. It wasn't even backups. See, y'all know I was frustrated with the Ravens the other night when they played Gus Edwards, who is a sort of 1A, 1B type starter. When they played him behind a backup offensive line. And even if he wanted to get the rust off, I'd do that behind the starters. Not behind the backups. But he was fine, so it's okay it worked out. But with J.K. Dobbins, his situation a couple years back when he got injured, 
that was behind the starting offensive line. So it's like, oh, everything that could go wrong on that play, it did. Uh, so that's when, I guess, that's when it happened where he couldn't, he wasn't going to be the guy anymore because he was hurt. And it's still continued to be running back by committee ever since. But now with J.K. Dobbins being back, I would expect him to be the feature back, still going to be running back by committee. They're still going to use different guys different ways. But I would expect J.K. Dobbins, I think we should all expect J.K. Dobbins to be uh, their main running back. And, and now it's important that, that, that J.K. does practice. It's important that he does get involved with training camp because, like we spoke about in the previous video from today, looking on the iPad is one thing, but actually out there practicing, it's a completely different ball game. But now J.K. Dobbins can participate in that completely different ball game. And we talked about the quality depth. Now you got your 1A starter back. So you got J.K. Dobbins. You got Gus Edwards. You got uh, Melvin Gordon. You got Justice Hill. You got Keaton Mitchell. Ravens, you got some tough decisions. Because if it's based off of just that first preseason game alone, you, you got to wonder if you're going to keep four. You really do. You got to wonder if you're going to keep four running backs. Now, with, again, with my expectation, we'll see what happens. But with my expectation of the, the way that the offense is going, it should be a lot more passing than we're used to. But you're still going to run the ball. So well, if, if it's, if it's going to be a lot more passing than we're used to, then would they keep four running backs? Because you're obviously going to keep at least three. You're going to keep at least three regardless of what the offense is. Uh, but we've seen them keep four in the past, but that was when the offense was more run-oriented, more run-heavy and whatnot. Um, so we'll see. And if I had to guess right now, ooh, but it would be so tough. Because if I had to guess right now, based off of the way that the Ravens do things, then I would say it would be J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Melvin Gordon, and Justice Hill, Keaton Mitchell practice squad. If it was up to me, the way I do things, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, Keaton Mitchell. But then it's like, man, you, you got to find a place for everybody. Keaton Mitchell could be a special teamer. He could be a return man. He could also be a running back too. Justice Hill, we already know he's on special teams, but he could also get in the game as well. And J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, they don't play special teams because uh, they done made it. They done, went, they done worked their way up. I mean, J.K. Dobbins was never going to – I mean, he's a second-round pick. He ain't going to be no special teamer. And it ain't no offense to special teamers. The special teamers are a big part of the game too. But they didn't bring J.K. Dobbins in with the intention of him playing on special teams. But, yeah, they got some tough decisions to make, real tough decisions to make. But I'm glad that J.K. is back to make their decisions that much tougher. I, I'm really glad that he's back. Um, so many Ravens fans throughout this whole J.K. debacle with the Baltimore Ravens, with this whole dispute, uh, so many Ravens fans have been like, J.K., come back. Come on, we're doing something special. J.K., you got the opportunity of a lifetime, man. Hey, we're going all the way this year. J.K., we need you. We want you back in the building, man. J.K., come through. And J.K., hey, he, he's continued to express, despite the business side, he loves Baltimore. He loves the team, loves the fans, loves the city, loves all that stuff. But hey, he's trying to handle his business. And like I've continued to say, and I will always say, I got no problem with that. JK, get your bread, get your money as, as you best can, man. Somebody asked me in a previous video, like, what do you mean by um, when you say JK should go out there and just really try to get all the money that he possibly can? He should try to maximize his earning potential, try to maximize his, uh, the money that he can get. And I, I explained that. Uh, what I meant when I said that is that with J.K. Dobbins, again, say for instance, Ravens give him a contract right now, he, he get a little raise. He get a nice little chunk of change, but it's not going to be as much as he could possibly get, whether it be from the Ravens or whether it be from another team. It's not going to be as much as he could possibly get if he goes out there and he kills it. If he goes out there and has a really good season, he goes out there and shows like, oh, no, no, this is the J.K. Dobbins that they drafted. This is me completely healthy. This is why I can be one of the best running backs, not in the AFC North, not even in the AFC, but in the NFL. If he goes out there and shows that despite free agency at running back getting even more crowded, 
If J.K. Dobbins can put together some nice film this year, some nice tape for teams this year, and again, whether that film is for the Baltimore Ravens or whether that film ends up being for somebody else, that film is going to be of J.K. Dobbins out there crushing it. And it's so important that he got back. Again, the leverage. He didn't have any leverage in the situation. We talked about that too extensively. The position that he's in, the way that the running back market is right now, doesn't play in J.K. Dobbins' favor at all. At all. Like, not one bit. Especially with the whole, everything going on with all the running backs around the league. We talked about earlier, we remember Joe Mixon with the pay cuts. Uh, we know about Ezekiel Elliott, still a free agent. He had a visit last week, but still a free agent. We look at Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs over the past couple of one of the best running backs over the past couple of years. Still a free agent till this day. Still a free agent. He's still out there. So the market is tough, man. That's why J.K. Dobbins, his leverage was so low because the market is rough on running backs right now. So it's almost like J.K. Dobbins ain't have no choice but to come back. He ain't have no choice but to come through. And I, I think with Ravens, they a psychological team too. They're obviously a business, but the, the, the whole, the, 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 the psychological part plays a big role too. Reason being because they had a, their choice at a lot of other running backs that they could have brought in. They had their pick of a whole lot of veteran free agent running backs that they could have signed. But they chose Melvin Gordon. They chose Melvin Gordon. I remember before there was past stuff that said they had been interested in Melvin Gordon before. That was a long time ago. But they chose Melvin Gordon. Is it a coincidence? Hey, could be, but I think this played a factor. But is it a coincidence that Melvin Gordon also went through his holdout situation too? Because teams, businesses, y'all know it from personal experience. I know it from personal experiences too. Businesses will, they'll, they'll play the psychological game when they try to send you a message. They, they, they can try to send you a message in, in, in so many different ways. And they, they, they just really want it to click for you. To be like, oh, okay, <laughs> you get it now, don't you? I bet you do. And I hope you do. They'll do that type of stuff. It's business, it's, it's the game within the game within the game. Because this could be on a whole nother level. Or hey, maybe I'm thinking too deep into it. Who knows? But regardless of whatever it is with Melvin Gordon, whatever it is with the other running backs, J.K. Dobbins is back. I'm sure, I know y'all are sure too, that the preseason game just watching them. <laughs> you know that motivated J.K. Dobbins that much more, man. You, you know it, you know it did. It had to. Because if you sitting back and you watching other people who could essentially take your job, and this could happen to any of us, we sit back and we, we having problems with the company that we work for. We frustrated with the company that we work for. We want to raise from the company that we work for. But the company ain't budging. Mm, frustrating. And then if we ain't got no leverage too, even more frustrating. But then if we watching people in our same position for the company that we work for, we watching them and they look good too. We could be like, man, mm. all right, maybe, maybe I'm going to just have to, I'm going to have to ride this one out. I ain't going to be able to get what I want right now. It's not going to work in my favor right now, but you know what? So I don't end up coming away with nothing. If I don't end up, so I don't end up coming away with less, then let me, you know what? Let, let me go back. Let, 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 let me show up. And I think that's what it is with J.K. Dobbins right now. Because had he held out, had he stayed on the physically unable to perform list, he'd be right back in this situation a year later. Right back in the situation a year later. So this is a uh, smart move, in my opinion, from J.K. Dobbins. Uh, and I hope he goes out there and he just, he shows us the best J.K. Dobbins that we done ever seen on the, as a Baltimore. No, no, no. I hope he goes out there and shows us the best J.K. Dobbins that we have ever seen. Ever Better than Ohio State Better than Baltimore Ravens Just the best J.K. Dobbins We've ever seen Because the potential's there It's just a matter of Putting it all together Putting it all together J.K. Dobbins reminds me Of the running back version Of Rashad Bateman 
to where the potential is right there. And we've seen it. We've seen it plenty of times. But now it's about just putting it all together. And J.K. Dobbins, I would assume that he's going to be the Baltimore Ravens number one running back, even though they'll still do by committee, but he's going to be their main guy. And the same way with Rashad Bateman. I think he's going to be their number one receiver. And both of them, about a week apart from each other, they returning. They're back. They activated off the physically unable to perform list. And this is beautiful news. This is wonderful news. This is great news. Because both of them, major contributors to what the Baltimore Ravens can do. That they can be major contributors and their roles are extremely important. Because they play essential roles in Ravens getting this thing done. Ravens got all the potential in the world. But potential don't mean nothing unless you unlock it. So I'm happy for Rashad Bateman. Happy for Pat Ricard too. But most importantly, this video centered around J.K. Dobbins. And we're extremely happy for him that he is no longer out.